I will discuss in this video how to determine whether an argument is valid or invalid using the truth table. Let's start with uh, the first example. Um, the first argument uh, has the following uh, statements. Uh, the first the statement here, which is called as your premise, uh, is uh, in the form of uh, a conditional statement. And then you have uh, the second uh, statement, which is called as your second premise, is a, a simple statement. And then you have the conclusion. So basically, an argument consists of premises and a conclusion. Um, so how do we determine whether this is uh, valid or invalid? Okay, uh, first thing we do is to uh, write the argument in uh, symbolic form. It means that we're going to assign a variable or a letter for each uh, component no, of a premise so that uh, the first premise can be written if for example we use uh, e for if logic is easy then we have for our first premise that would be e uh, implies okay because this is a conditional statement then i am monkey's uncle uh, suppose you we will use you for I am monkey's uncle. So the first premise in symbol is E implies you. And then the second premise is I am not a monkey's uncle. Now remember that we use you for the statement I am a monkey's uncle. So that means that the second premise can be written as negation of you. Okay. And we we put that in the second line, no? Okay. And then you separate the premises and then the conclusion by a bar. Okay, this is uh, actually what we call the standard uh, form no, of writing the uh, um, argument. Okay, and your conclusion is therefore uh, we use uh, the three dots here to denote uh, the therefore logic is not easy. Now take note that. The statement logic is easy is denoted by E. So that means that when you say logic is not easy, it will be negation of negation of E. Okay. So is this valid or not valid? Uh, one method that we will use here is the truth table. Okay. Uh, there are two propositional variables here, so that means that uh, we have E and U. And uh, the, the, the two um, statements, respectively, are E implies U, and the other one is negation of negation of you okay and then your conclusion is negation of e okay, i hope you can follow now um so remember these are your premises now this is uh, your premise number one this is your premise number two and this is your conclusion okay uh, first let's determine the uh, possible combinations for the truth values of e and u uh, there are two propositional variables so that means that we have four rows okay uh, the first row is true and true for both uh, e and u then we have true for e and false for u false for e and true for u and then false for e and false for u 
And then let's determine the truth uh, value for premise number one. Um, premise number one it implies you okay. Uh, I hope you can still recall the uh, standard truth table for a conditional statement. Uh, we say that it implies you is false whenever your uh, hypothesis is true and your conclusion is false. So that means that uh, true and true here is true and this is false. Okay, the rest is true. Your premise number two is negation of u. Um, u is true here, so this is false. This is false, so you have true for negation of u. This is true, so you have false. And this is false, so this is true. Okay. Um, to decide whether the argument is valid or not valid, you focus only on the row where your premises are true. Okay, that means that the rest of the rows are actually disregarded. You only consider this one. We we call this the critical row. Okay, the row where your premises are true is called as the critical row. Now, it is possible actually to have more than one critical rows, okay? Uh, it just so happened here that we have one critical row. So, uh, what you need to do is to determine the truth value of the conclusion for the critical row, row. Don't mind the other rows. We only focus on the critical row. Okay, what is your conclusion? Okay, what is the truth value of your conclusion in the critical row? Your conclusion is negation of E. And uh, negation of E, your E here is false, right? For that particular row. So that means that your negation of E is true. Okay. So we have, we have a case where in the critical row, your conclusion is true. What is the implication of this? The implication of this is that this argument is valid. So we say that... Uh, the argument is valid. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, to illustrate that further, let's uh, consider our second example. Uh, if this number is larger than two, then its square is larger than four. This number is not larger than two. Therefore, the square of this number is not larger than 4. Okay. Uh, um, normally, the one that uh, starts with therefore is your conclusion, right? Okay. And how many premises do we have? We have one. Uh, the first premise here, which is if this number is larger than 2, then its square is larger than 4. And your second premise is this number is not larger than 2. Okay. Uh, first step again is to... Uh, convert this into symbolic form so uh, perhaps we will use the word T for the hypothesis of the first premise so if this number is larger than 2 then so implies its square is larger than 4 so let's use maybe F it's up to you what symbol to use no? um, then the second premise is this number is not larger than 2. Rem take note that uh, the statement this number is larger than 2 is denoted by t. So the statement this number is not larger than 2 is, your, is negation of t. Then let's put a bar to separate the premises and the conclusion. And your conclusion is therefore the square of this number is not larger than 4. Meaning that's negation of negation of f okay is this uh, argument valid or not valid again we construct the truth table uh, we have t f okay and uh, the first premise is t implies f the second premise is negation of t and your conclusion is negation of 
negation of f. Then, um, this is true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Okay, what is the truth value for the first premise? So, this is your first premise, this is the second premise, and this is your conclusion. Okay, of course, this is true, right? This one is false, this is true, and this is true. What about your second premise? Negation of t. t is true here, so this is false. This is true, so we have false, false, so we have true. This is true. Uh, okay, how many critical rows do we have? We uh, eliminate those uh, for which the one of the premises is false. Okay, that means that we only have two critical rows. Okay, again, critical rows are those rows for which the premises are true. Then from here, we're going to determine the truth value of our conclusion. Your conclusion is negation of f. So f is here, okay? If uh, f here is true, so that means negation of f is false. f here is false, so that means that the negation of f is uh, true. Now, um, we say that the argument is valid provided that your conclusion is true whenever uh, your conclusion is true in those rows which are for which your premises are true in other words for those rows which are considered to be critical rows your conclusion must be true in order for the argument to be valid but we have here we have here a uh, row a critical row where the conclusion is false okay so that means that the this argument is not valid so the argument is in valid okay ah. let's move to example number three uh, may, perhaps we'll do this for our in our next video